Chance Comanche, portrayed in the media as a future basketball star who lost it all for love. The saying goes, everyone is a murderer, all it takes is the right reason and a bad day. Was Chance Comanche born to be a cold-blooded murderer, or was it just the right reason on a bad day? Today we are taking a deep dive into the ongoing true crime case of NBA player Chance Comanche. Thank you for being here. If you don't mind whilst you are here, like in the video. And if you're feeling extra generous and you haven't already, do subscribe to my channel. I post content often. And yeah, let's get into the case. Last month, on the 6th of December 2023, a 23-year-old medical student, Morena Rogers, vanished whilst on a trip in Las Vegas. She was last seen alive on the evening of the 6th of December. She was visiting her friends with her boyfriend in Las Vegas and they'd been there since the 1st of December. The last anyone heard from Morena was she was heading into an Uber to go to Summerlin, a community in West Las Vegas. She was going there for a quote-unquote date, which I'll get into later. Morena always shared her live location with her friends and family, so they always knew where she was, but they became increasingly worried when she never reached her destination and they hadn't heard from her in hours. Her last known location that her phone pinged was on Restless River Street, around 22 miles from where her Uber had meant to drop her off. Her phone pinged her location at 3am on the 6th of December, but from there it was either turned off or was disabled. Seeing this, her friends could not rest. I mean, it's 3 in the morning, Morena is only 23 years old, and no one had heard from her in hours. All they knew was that she hadn't been dropped off in the place she was meant to and she's 22 miles away from where she was meant to be. Of course, they were so worried that something bad had happened to Morena, her, their loved one. So the very next day, they reported Morena missing to the police. They had to rule out any possible other reason as to why she would go missing before getting to the worst case scenario. So they tried to maybe investigate that she had run away. But this was very quickly ruled out. Like I said, Morena had no money on her, no debit cards or credit cards. She was in a very happy relationship with her boyfriend. She had two dogs and she was a dog mom. They were her babies and she would not leave them. Morena had a good career as a medical assistant and she had not long graduated uni. She also had a job as a sex worker and that's pretty crucial to this case. So with all these factors, police deemed it unlikely that she had run away and very quickly suspected foul play and they honed in on two suspects when police discovered that Morena had plans to meet them that night. 19 year old Sakari Arndon who would be bringing along her 27 year old NBA G League player former boyfriend Chance Comanche. This now makes them the last two people to see Morena Rogers alive. Police arrested Sakari Arndon for first degree kidnap on the 13th of December and two days later they arrested Chance Comanche for first degree kidnapping in California on the 15th of December. Police seized their phones when investigating and they were shocked by the incriminating evidence that was found on there. But before I get into that, I do want to talk about the suspects. Chance Comanche was an up and coming basketball player born on the 14th of April 1996 in Beverly Hills, California. He is the son of the former professional basketball player Melissa McGee, who herself had a noteworthy career in women's basketball during the early 90s at Long Beach State. From what I researched, and there wasn't too much information, but Chance had a good childhood from what I could tell, him and his mother had a very close relationship. One article stated, Melissa passed down a legacy of resilience and determination to her son Chance. Her influence on Chance's life has been profound, shaping his perspective and fueling his drive for success in the competitive world of professional basketball. Chance grew to be around 6 foot 10 and decided to follow in the footsteps of his mother and pursue basketball as a career. At 19 years old, Chance attended the University of Arizona but he left prematurely. After two years of attending, he left the university once he was declared for the NBA draft. 
However, he wasn't selected by any team. Six months later, he joined the Memphis Hustles of the NBA G League. Chance Comanche, over his short basketball career, got signed by five different teams. But at this time of the case, he was playing for the Stockton Kings. From what I read, but different sources said different things, Chance Comanche, over his short career, made around $1 million. But at this point in his life, everything was irrelevant to police, except his involvement in the missing persons case, Morena Rogers. And it did not take long until Chance Comanche cracked. But not to just kidnapping 23-year-old Morena Rogers, but to murdering her. And apparently, the mastermind of this plan, the one that sought revenge, was Morena's own friend and Chance's former girlfriend. This case had gone from just a disappearance to a murder. The alleged mastermind of this plan was 19-year-old Sakari Arden. Chance and Sakari knew each other very well. They met online around a year and a half prior to this case. They started dating, but it didn't work out, so they remained as friends. But very good friends. A friend you can confide in, or a friend you can ask to be an accomplice in murder. Similar to Morena, Sakari was a sex worker. They met around six or seven years ago whilst they were working the same part in Vegas. They were friends, but the relationship turned nasty. Just two days prior to Morena going missing, they had an altercation. An altercation that would turn deadly. That would involve death threats and plans of hiring a hitman. Sakari allegedly implicated her current boyfriend in a crime, a double murder in California. And because of this, he got arrested. Allegedly, Sakari told Morena all of this. That she is the reason her boyfriend was in jail for double murder. And the altercation really happened when Morena allegedly started telling other people. It upset Sakari because she told Morena as a secret. And now everyone would know that she basically told on her boyfriend to the police and now he's been arrested. There was also an ongoing argument about a Rolex watch. Allegedly, Sakari stole Morena's Rolex and this is what really added fuel to the altercation and they were exchanging death threats. Like, Morena said that she will smoke Sakari, like shoot her and Sakari said the same kind of things back. This is very crazy and I kind of just had to point out that two men are now in jail because of Sakari and both on a murder charge. Her current boyfriend, which I don't know if they're still seeing each other, Yuswa, is now in jail for double murder because Sakari snitched. And I'm not saying that's wrong. I mean, he apparently committed a double murder, so he probably belongs in jail, but just pointing it out. And her former boyfriend, Chance Comanche, is also in jail for murder because she said, and I quote, Chance is in love with me and would do anything for me. This case is very new, so I'm just going to keep saying allegedly. But allegedly, this is Sakari's version of events. She met Morena with the intention of sleeping with NBA players. Like I said, they were both sex workers. One being Chance Comanche. At one point in the night, Sakari asked Morena if they wanted to go to Chance's hotel room. But Morena declined and said that she was going to go to Summerlin to meet with another client. Sakari then went on to say that Morena got in the Uber and that was the last time she had ever seen her. The story, I imagine, had been rehearsed by Sakari many times, but there were some flaws in the story that she couldn't have foreseen. For example, the Uber that she said Morena got in. Morena always used her boyfriend's Uber account. In fact, they didn't even believe that she had her own. So when Morena's boyfriend looked at his Uber history, there was no Ubers going to Summerlin. There was no Ubers at that time. There was no Ubers at that location. And when police investigated further, they of course asked Uber the company and they confirmed that there was no Ubers in that radius at that time. So they could confirm that that ride never happened. 
meaning there's no proof that Morena ever left Sakari. Sakari said that once Morena left, she stayed with Chance. She tried to contact Morena multiple times that night, but her phone went to voicemail. That's when Sakari said that she was so worried about her friend that she had to go to the police and file a missing persons report. She also noted in this report that Morena was high on ecstasy and was drunk. I think it's clear that Sakari fabricated this story to paint herself as this worried friend and that she even went to the police station to report her missing to further have evidence to support that. But when retelling this story, Sakari missed out the most crucial and important part of that night, Morena's murder. Despite their previous argument, Sakari hit up Morena to say that she had a client and this client was willing to pay $4,000 for the night. He was an NBA player, but Sakari said that he was into very kinky stuff, he was into bondage, and that he would want their hands tied up during the whole interaction. Morena agreed to this and her boyfriend can confirm this story. When the girls arrived to the arranged location, they got into the front seat of this client's car and I'm sure you can guess, this client is Chance Comanche. Chance was waiting in the back seat and when the girls got in, he got a HDMI cable and put it around the front of Morena's neck. It said in the court reports that Chance strangled her with this cord for around 10 seconds, but released the cord when he heard Morena struggle to breathe. But Sakari, who was straddling Morena, continued to hold her bare hands around Morena's neck and choke her. Once she was unresponsive, Sakari released her hands from around her neck, and both Sakari and Chance would check in her neck to see if there was a pulse and to ensure that Morena was dead. The next part of their twisted plan was to dump Morena's body. They drove out to Nevada Desert and pulled up on the side of the road and threw Morena's dead body into a ditch and attempted to cover her body by throwing rocks on top of her. Chance used the towel to pick up the rocks to avoid getting his DNA on them. Police later discovered Morena's body. After committing such a brutal murder, they both went back to Chance's hotel where he was staying with his team for his basketball game the very next morning. He really played a game of basketball after committing a brutal murder over nothing. But this will be Chance's last professional game for a long time, if ever. His team, the Stockton Kings, kicked him off the team when his violent actions came to light. By this point, detectives had a warrant to search both Chance's and Sakari's mobile phone and the texts that come back were utterly shocking and so incriminating. They discussed several ways in which they could commit this murder. They discussed poisoning, strangulation and even hiring a hitman, which they attempted to do. They said that they would pay someone $3,000 to do it but eventually it just fell through. Chance's text messages allegedly read, I can snap her neck or just strangle the bitch. He continued to say, if you get a nice little thick piece of rope or something sturdy, I can do it from the back seat, like how the killers do in movies. The messages did not stop after the murder. Chance put, you got this boo, this is a post game interview, just smile and wave. About a 23 year old girl's death, it just meant nothing to them that they had this blood on their hands. Chance and Sakari are now being faced with the murder and kidnap of Morena Rogers. This case is still unravelling and it's very early days but maybe we will get an answer this year. The big question is, was Chance Comanche an accessory to this murder? Or is he as guilty as Sakari Arndon? The murder was premeditated, but who was the real mastermind behind this plan? Thank you for joining me on this case. Don't forget, if you like the video, to like the video, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you in my next case. Take care. Bye.